Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Digital Painting Art Show. My name is Jesus Conde and today we're going to be doing this weird fish concept art style using photo bashing. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, I, I did this drawing last week for another tutorial and now I'm going to clean it a bit but I, I want to tell you that I changed it. I changed it, uh, the shape a bit. I As you can see I have other concept, other um, sketches uh, in the page but this is the one that I like the most so this this is the one that I'm cleaning um, which which is the cool thing of having a lot of um, sketches and drawings done in, in paper later you can revisit revisit them and give them another treat update them um, take ideas that you have that you thought they didn't work but then you realize that they are actually really cool and you want to um, try something with them later so we're going to be talking about uh, how to use the laser tool so you, here you can you can you can see what I'm doing but a um, few seconds I'm going to explain you how to use it how to um, how do I use it um, so you can see it's actually really easy uh, it's just a matter it takes a bit of time to to get the result with it like um, is a, is a really boring tool but you can get a lot of advantage using it so it's definitely something you don't want to miss um, well, when you working on, on Photoshop you could be easily you could be just erasing what you don't want to to use but I'm telling you this is you see, this is used a lot um, these days because the line that you get the silhouette that you get is so clean and looks a lot better than something erased. A lot of people use this tool uh, trying to cut everything at the same time, which is really, I, I don't recommend doing that. Um, the, the best way, I think, is do it by little pieces. And I want, I want to explain you more about this technique later. Um, here, I'm trying to fix a little bit of the perspective that I think uh, is wrong with the drawing because of the picture that I took. I didn't scan the drawing, I just took a picture. And now I just copy in some parts that I have that I like and, and paste them, them again, basically duplicating them to get a more interesting shape that is also allowed to do. Um, and then collapsing everything again using Control um, M, you can merge the layers. And in here, basically, I, I, I just repeated the layer to have two versions of it. Uh, normally, in, in my job, I will do some, something like three or four at the same time, but I prefer to do two in this one. So this is the laser tool, the, this icon you see right here. If you click, you can see three three different tools, the polygon tool and the, the other one is a ma magnetic polygon tool. But you have this laser tool, which is the one I use. And if you click uh, again, you basically start a selection from the beginning. But if you want to try to select something at once, it's kind of really hard to do. I'm trying my best here to to get all the selection that I want at the same time, but it's really difficult to do. And now, if, if sometimes what, what's going to happen is that you are doing that and you're going to lose control of it for X reason. I don't know and you you just have something uh, and you have to you think you have to start from zero but actually you have two ways to use this um, which is um, getting more selection which is with the shift um, key on the keyboard or erasing selection which is with the with the alt so here I'm selecting this and if I press the shift I can keep um, so, so um, how do I say that? Like, you can keep um, putting more selection in into what you have already, and if you press the Alt, you you erase the selection. So <clears throat> it's really easy to use this way, because if you have something that you you don't care to have, you just erase it. And if you have to add uh, a little bit more selection, that's the word add. If you want to add more selection, you just press Shift and keep um, adding and adding. And what I did at the end was that I selected everything that I wanted, erased what I didn't want, and then I just um, I just Control Z to copy, and then Control V 
to paste the selection, which is the fish. Uh, once you, you see the fish cut it, that's what I did. Just Control C and Control V to get it out. The other tool that we're going to be using in this tutorial is the transform tool. You can you go to edit, transform, and you can see that you have distort or warp. So if you go to edit, transform, you can see you have distort or warp. We're going to use distort. That is the one that I use to fix the perspective a bit and to change some of the, 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 the problems that I had and to change the silhouette. And basically, if you, if you just copy some selection that you have and you go to edit, um, transform and distort, what's going to happen is that you get these nodes that you can pull on the, on the corners. And when doing that, it actually you can kind of trick some perspectives. Uh, if you really get good using this, uh, you can trick some perspective in few, far, in few parts. And other thing is that you have already something and you, and you just push control on the keyboard, you can do the same thing. If you have already something um, selected and copy and paste it. Another is the, that we want to use the warp tool and it's basically the same thing but with uh, curves so if you pull one corner you can see you have a curve to the other corner and you can change this, this curve kind of like if you, you, you were using vectors if you were using other programs like like um, Illustrator or, or Coral Draw but this is based on bitmap so it, it, it's not the same thing but kind of uh, is the same way that you use it Other thing you need to know in this tutorial are the clipping masks. And the clipping mask is basically if you have this object here, um, and I paste some texture, and I want this texture to be inside of this um, thing, this drawing, this image that I have, assuming that it has a transparent um, part of it, like a transparent edge. So this will be the computer will inter interpret this like this is all white and the transparent parts are black. So that's the easiest way to see it. The 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 white will be positive. It will be the part that is showing, and the black will not. So if I paste some texture like this um, uh, fish skin, and I have this underneath, which has transparent part is not all solid it has transparent um, on the background and I just click do right click here on the layer and push click create uh, clipping mask what you get is that it's going to get inside of that and that's exactly what I'm going to do with the fish I'm going to put textures and now I'm going to do paint on top of that um, <clears throat> So this, this layer is the object that you have and if you paint something else, you can see that it changes. It changes uh, dynamically, the mask. Um, what else can I say? <clears throat> you can also change the, the opacity. Uh, you can create a new layer. As you can see here, I just create a new one and I can just put whatever I want on that one and it will overlap the one I had before or I can merge them with Control E, Control M, sorry. Um, actually, it's Control E or Control M, Control M I guess. Um, so it's, it's really nice to use once you have a nice silhouette. So be sure to have a nice silhouette, right? Well cut it with the laser tool. Um, another thing, let's see. <clears throat> you can change the opacity using the numbers. If I press H, which is the, the the little hand you can see here, and I press the numbers. You can see what happening is I'm changing the opacity with the with the numbers on the keyboard. But you have to you have to you gotta have H um, on the keyboard on to do this with the because if you you press the number using the B, which is the brush, what you get is you change the opacity on the brush. So. Photobashing is technically just taking 
photos to get results quicker in your paintings but this could be a problem if you, you don't use them right um, for example if I search anything on the web you should be aware that some images there are, there are on the internet that you cannot use so if I write something like fish skin you get all the results in images that's fine but some of the images have a watermark which means you cannot use it or you should not use it unless you buy it but uh, the thing is that, that, let's get real you don't want to pay for anything so uh, we go to search tools and you go to <coughs> usage rights which is the rights of the images if you press um, on the on the one that you can reuse or reuse with modifications um, that's perfectly uh, good you will be safe so you can use those you can even credit the the person that took the picture and if you if you want to do go even further you can take the picture yourself actually that would be the best case but assuming that you are working in an office and, and you need to do something like in take a picture for, from Scotland you cannot go there and <laughs> take a picture there so the easiest thing would be doing just finding something on the internet and doing this so basically what I'm going to do here is just copy a bunch of textures that I like that I, I, I think I can get something out of them uh, with my painting and try to get a good result with them um, and the fun part is that some ideas are going to happen that were actually were not your first ideas which is the beautiful thing about this because you are using stuff that already exists and it's giving you new ideas I'm not saying this is the way that everyone should work but it's definitely something uh, that you have to sometimes you should try it at least to know how it feels um, because at the end, if you do it um, somehow else, uh, you you could do the same thing by just let's see, starting with something. For example, I pasted this texture and it instantly gave me two textures, one on top, and one on the bottom, without knowing that was going to happen. And that's the beauty, beautiful thing of it. And you just click uh, with that idea of of these two different textures for the fishes is accidentally and a lot of good ideas come from accidents actually and that's the beautiful part of this process that's the part that I really like the most about doing photo bashing when I do it because I don't use it all the time because I recognize that it, you could get lost on it like use it too much and then when you really have to do something from yourself you won't be able to do it without it and that's really bad because the thing is these artists um, that are from from let's say people like John Howe or are really old artists I'm not saying like old in age I'm just saying old well maybe a little bit old in age but I'm, what I'm trying to say is they have their skill developed by time and there come this new era where everything is like so easy and they look down to us I know they do because it's not supposed to be this way so it's a bit weird to use this kind of, of techniques without feeling guilty so now um, I'm just trying to get a nice um, color and I'm going to copy the, the, the liner that I had and put it on top of that and just make a, made a multiply kind of blend mode I'm going to explain that later so you can see <laughs> with detail exactly what I did um, exactly how, how I explained the other things but I just, wanted, I just wanted you to see it without cutting too much normally I cut a lot of the process because of the time of, of, the, of the videos but I decided I, I was going to kind of go back to what I had before I, I cut it but not too much and, and you still can get the video on the Patreon uh, with some stuff that you won't see here but anyway um, the thing is <clears throat> I really wanted you guys to see the whole process even some of the mistakes because in this case the mistakes are important um, because it, they are part of this workflow working with photo bashing uh, will give you something that you didn't really want it at the beginning 
but actually looks better to what you could have done. So that's what I like of this technique. So here what I'm doing, which is something I actually do at work, is setting up a um, timer. I use a timer and if, I have, if I'm doing four proposals at the same time, which is normal, I prefer to do four instead of just one really well done. I prefer to do four uh, like in medium uh, quality. And <clears throat> what I do is I get a timer so I can control how much time I spend in each. And for example, here I put it 10 minutes in this head and then I'm going to use 10 minutes in the other head. But that's because the head is the part that really um, worries me. Once I get the heads like I want it to be, I just continue with the body and it will be like five minutes um, in one and then five minutes to in the other one. And this is actually something uh, good because you can, you can rest for working on one and then you get ideas. While working on one, you get ideas for the other one. And here I just did two because it is, this is a tutorial. But I'm, I'm like, what I could actually do about four at the same time, and you can either you can either show them to the art director, everyone, um, every every proposal, or you can or you could just pick one yourself that of those four that you really um, of the four that you worked on, you could you could pick one that you really like. Sorry, and is a normal thing that's a normal thing because in, in uh, if the art department is is good and is um let's say is if it's big like 10 people you could have 10 paintings in one day they because they spend all day painting but of those 10 paintings they're going to choose just one or two maybe in a good day because it, it could be no um, any, it could be any. Like I, I, I don't like any of this. The art director could say that we like this direction, but I don't like any of these paintings. So let's get start. Let's get starting on new ones. That could be a case, and you don't want to spend all day doing those. So what if instead of doing one each, you could do three each? In instead of ten paintings, you could have thirty paintings. And of those thirty paintings, the art director maybe like six. Or even 10 uh, who knows but it's a better gap I think from from choosing um, two or three the, um, in, instead of um, 10 or 6 y you have to increase the chances that of effectivity on your on your work and in the and in the team so I think doing this is really really good so for example I did this too in about I, I don't know exactly how much time I spent but let's say it took me up uh, like three hours tops maybe I don't know like three hours tops and the whole process but in a normal day you can have at least um, four maybe five if you if you're doing it like this because if you're doing it way uh, simpler you could do more, I mean you could do like 10. Sometimes in, in, at my job I do about 4 paintings, really little ones. And they they could like like 3 or maybe 2. But I know that I try to give them as much um, proposals as possible. Um, but if you, if you do just one, then you're in trouble because then that means okay in the week you're gonna do 5 paintings, 5 paintings and if, if they don't like any of them in the week then what you want to do the next week you want to do five more but you could do eight, eight paintings in two days <clears throat> see what i mean okay so now i'm just adding some backlight here and uh, started is it's more a question of time uh, once you get to the to the process because you already have all the ingredients you have some of the shadows you have a lot of textures i'm using a really little um, brush as you can see that's another thing. I'm using a little little brush. We're going to talk about that brush later too. And it's because I have a lot of detail in the in the shape already. I don't want to mess up this using a large um, brush. If I use if you use a large brush, you're gonna get like soft 
uh, surfaces and I don't like sor soft surfaces I like when they look really detailed um, at least in this kind of um, work if it was something like skin maybe I will do I will use a uh, ha um, big brush really soft brush and big but in this case I want detail so I'm using a really little uh, tiny brush it's not that tiny but it is and I'm just doing trying to blend some of the colors that I have there to what I have in the in the detail of the of the photos okay so now I'm going to explain you about the the brush that I'm using which is a normal brush it's just a circle brush as you can see if you press F5 you can enter the options of the brush and you have shape dynamics if you click shape dynamics you turn on the the pen pressure options and the pen pressure is set to be the pressure of the pen you can see here the pen pressure that will be that if you if you click really hard you will get a thicker line if you click little you will get a thin line uh, I mean if you push the pencil against the tablet that's what it meant and then I change the roundness you can change the roundness is it like a novel shape so I have this kind of like a novel um, uh, brush you can save it in that button down there and we are all set that's the brush that I use for this tutorial I didn't use any other brush just a, maybe I use a soft one but it's not really like big deal um, because it's a normal one too so in the dodge tool I have dodge tool burn and the sponge if I click on the sponge what happens is you get out of the get the, get the color out like desaturation total desaturation of what you're doing which is um, black and white gray scale uh, images if you click on the burn tool what you do is that you get you get you burn the image to darker values and you can see up here let me go back okay you can see up here you have shadows <clears throat> if you have mid tones you get another result so you have to put it in shadows when you're using the burn burn one if you want to use the dodge one which is for lighter effects is this one you have to put highlights on and what you get is this you get this kind of like a um, more saturated more lighter colors and that's what I did in some part of the of the fish skin to get some of the highlights some of them not too much you, you, you don't want to overuse this um, tool <clears throat> so you have to be sure that it's in highlights because mid-tone uh, what you get is like something like white instead of the same color but saturated you get like a wider version of the color looks really weird so you have to put it in highlights let's see what else can I talk about here we, we can I use the sharpen but for doing that I like to duplicate the layer if you go to filter you can find sharpen here and I click on sharpen more and what is going to happen is that you get a sharper image that simple uh, but I want, I, the reason I do this is because the when I do this I notice that the drawings look more uh, have more impact have more texture have like look look like you have more detail instead of having the detail but at the end is something like is more a matter of how does it look now what it actually really is is an illusion of of, of of the result so you know filter sharpen and then sharpen more and you can either blend it with the what you had you had before and double it is your is your call but you can see here it looks kind of like washed um, result and then with the sharpen it looks a lot a lot that a lot sharper and uh, what else can we do here um, <clears throat> I'm forgetting to explain something let me see <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you about yeah about the blending mode so I have my drawing which is this one and it's kind of like gray looking because I just took it out of the page so what's going to happen if, it, if I click on a blending mode if I go to here and click on multiply everything that is white is going to turn down turn is going to disappear as my image is gray what's going to happen is it's going to do kind of like a dark 
semi-transparent dark so you can see the result here it is if I do the same using a screen blending mode it's going to have it the opposite it's going to happen the opposite the black will disappear and only the white will stay you can see in the black lines you have this kind of like a semi-transparent thing going on really cool uh, but to get rid of this I mean I want the whites to be completely white so they disappear and the blacks to be completely black so they stay so I go to image adjustments and auto levels and what you get is the like the definitive best color best version of the color you can have and is this the white is white and the black is completely black so now if I click on multiply what I get is a really nice looking uh, line art and that's it that's how you use the blending mode you have tons of blending modes I suggest you to test each one of them to see what they do and try to analyze what they do exactly but this, these are the ones that I use the most even for shadows or, or lighting you can try what happens when you use colors with screen blending mode or you, or you can use colors when multiply you get really interesting the results okay so now I'm going to continue adding more detail on the painting which is the fun part the fun part of the painting is this one just adding details okay right now I'm going to add some changes on the background just to make it a little bit more interesting uh, you should try to do some, probably you should try to do some kind of format that you always use for me is the gray background I'll, I always do use a gray background uh, because it helps you see the lighting a little bit better I guess and <laughs> here I'm uh, choosing some music to inspire anyway uh, the same process just five minutes in one five minutes in another one five minutes in one five minutes in the other one that's what I've been doing uh, well actually I hear I've just realized I needed some kind of like a soft reflection there so I kind of like skipped and put it in both but anyway you can you can do that is allowed you don't have to be a robot and just five minutes in one and then five minutes in the other one um, but yeah after this five minutes I jump to the other one and I, I, I as, as I explained before you do this because you want to keep kind of the same level of detail in both you don't want one to be better than the other one because you have more time to paint it and this shouldn't happen in your work you, the director should not notice when you have more time to do one and to do other one if you're presenting them at the same time it's going to be weird like what did you did you do did this like the, the beginning of the week and then you did this one like from yesterday and today is friday so no everything that you deliver should be the best quality that you can do for the time that was given so um yeah you have to kind of like manage your time for that that's what i use this technique so i want to remember you that i have a patreon page and you can download the psd and the line art and everything and you can just um, try it for yourself use the same line art that i did paint on top of that and get some results you can use the whatever photo you want you can use a red fish you can use a black purple fish whatever you want it, you don't even have to use fish um, photos you can use like i don't know a zebra if for the, all that matter anyway what matters is the the ideas that you can get and how creative you can get with with this if you want to use this fish for a game of yours that you're developing you can do it if you are my patron because this is for you this is for you to experiment this is for you to learn so take my PSDs and use it however you want because I'm saying that with all the other stuff that I've done uh, they give the video game HUD the, all the tutorials that I've done you can use it however you want because at the end this is for you anyway and you doing kind of like a, a small payment even though it's small it's just two dollars per month uh, it helps so it's okay uh, here I'm using the smudge tool Sorry that I didn't actually explain that in this tutorial. It's actually a really easy tool to use. It's kind of like a finger, and you can uh, use it with the letter, I think is R, yeah. Letter R on the keyboard. <clears throat> and right now, it's just a matter of time. I mean, you just paint and paint and paint. You can deliver uh, great quality. 
um, just work with the time that you that you have don't if, if you're working on the industry you don't want to take too much time doing things first because the, then the paintings get stiff like they don't look cool at the beginning and also because you don't want the clients the clients to wait too much for your your work um, it's a bad thing they will tell you they will tell you i don't like this do another version stuff like that if you're at the beginning now if this is the last painting that you have to do they tell you this is great i just want more refined version of this okay just tell them i need two days for painting this or something like that but really they have to really matter those hours that you put in because they will know they will know if you took the time or not to paint so <clears throat> do it with responsibility when you do this kind of thing <clears throat> anyway this tutorial is getting to the end thank you very much for joining me <laughs> it may sound a little bit tired because of this fast talking i'm trying to give you all the information at the same time that i can get get you and uh, remember to go to my patreon page the link is in the description and if you don't want to help me with my patreon page but you want to still support me you can get the skin tutorial um, a lot of people were asking me for a kind of like a recipe to painting uh, skin because they really want to learn like step by step, like really easy. Uh, man, I, I want to paint a skin, but it's so hard. So I came up with this kind of like a formula that if you follow it step by step, you can and you can at the end paint a skin properly. But it's not like I'm not saying it's just it's easy. I'm just saying it's a formula. And with the ingredients, the proper ingredients to paint, you can get this result exactly. And for that, so you can compare, I did the line arts. You can use the line arts, you can use the skin tones. I have a few palettes of skin tones um, that you can use. So you can use exactly the same color that I use. You don't have to kind of like do something randomly you just use the same color that i did at the same opacity and everything and you get the same result you should get the same result and if you don't just try it again because i actually have to do this tutorial two times to get it right and i'm, I'm the one that's doing it so you can imagine how hard it is so it's not easy uh, it, it, you can actually learn to paint beard and everything in this tutorial well thank you very much the links are in the description bye bye